Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's an oscilloscope from Thanda. It's called SC110A. It's a single channel oscilloscope, only one input here. But it should have a bandwidth of 10 megahertz. So I can't wait to test that one. It is so tiny, tiny and lightweight. Look, I can I can even cover the entire screen with just my thumb. The size of the CRT is 32 by 26 millimeters. We got five by four divisions, and they're six millimeters each. So that means the trace area is 30 by 24 millimeters. That is the size of it, on and off. Oh yeah, this uh, oscilloscope is uh, battery powered, or it can be battery powered. So I took away the little battery lid here, made in England. And it runs on four cells. And the power supply can be uh, anything from uh, 4 to 10 volts DC. So even a recharge circuit in here, I guess it's just a res it's just a resistor, right? So you just charge some kind of current in there. But we are very, very lucky the previous owners always took out the batteries. Look at that, how nice and clean it is. That is rare to see that. Oh, there's a little crack here, so that means when you put in batteries, you can see here, it's definitely gonna crack. It uses about one watt on batteries. This entire scope, <laughs> one watt, that is nothing. I definitely look forward to test this one the, there is a little rubber feed missing here on the back and they hide the screws this is a classic way to hide screws by the way so so there's a a screw that's not hidden like that and then you got four other screws hidden underneath the rubber feed well, that is a nasty trick for somebody who didn't know that. Imagine trying to open this and remove this screw and then just start to break this. It says here, yeah. 10 megahertz, batteries, battery life. Switch off when not in use. Door, clearly. AC power charger, use the... Thunder approved type. Ooh, so I am going to violate that recommendation because I don't have the power supply. Yeah, let's uh, let's power this up. I am ready to power this up. I connected my power supply. To the battery input just because I didn't want to screw up uh, by reversing the DC input so that is six volts power on oh there's a dot ooh, 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 ooh. why are you not moving that is not is it responding to input here Yes, that was input. Oops, and then it goes away. There is definitely something completely... Okay, we got loose connections here. Probably some trigger. I don't know. Why is it just doing like that? It's not responding to...
what am I doing wrong here? I feel like a complete idiot here. Okay, I think I figured this out. The time base here is not responding in any way. So that has something to do with the problem, right? And when triggering is working, see if I crank down the signal on it, see, now there's a trigger. So now it actually tries to start the time base and the time base is not working. So that blanks the screen, right? So that is what is the problem so far. Yeah, this is so typical. So now I'm lining up here with my scopes and doing all sorts of measurements and <laughs> look at that, I got sweep and I also got input. See, all I have to do is poke a little bit with the switch here, see? So in half of the positions, see? There you have it. And It's already getting better and better. But yeah, it's definitely on, online again here. We just got a lot of bad conditions and it's, see, it's also the same here. See, and then sometimes you got sweep, or sometimes you don't. So that is the problem. See, it's also responding to Position here and position here, so all that is great, and it is really a beautiful, beautiful scope. It's very, very nicely designed inside. It's actually, super, super compact. We got two boards here, and they're only a few centimeters high. And full of components and good stuff, trimmers and all that. Uh, the first thing I was checking was the position parts, and I got plus minus five volts on each side, and the position voltage here goes, of course, perfectly fine between plus minus five volt. And then I figured, oh, well, what happens with my my sweep IC? Is that one? That is oopsie doopsie handling sweep here on IC2 and uh, th then I was starting to measure that and suddenly poof I got picture and everything is stable so and I think I just pushed this board a little bit here I don't know if it's I can recreate that there's not a lot to be afraid of in the yeah, you see. I will figure this out in a minute, definitely, because this is so, so cute. I <laughs> totally love this scope. And here's this little switch mode power supply. And at the moment, it's using 0 0.7 watts. Ah, <laughs> that is so little. You can run this the whole week on a battery pack like that. Isn't that just amazing they could do this? Quite a lot of wires to solder and uh, a little bit of how you're doing here with the resistors from the different uh, time base settings. So it's probably not super compact or Maybe somebody changed all those resistors to get really accurate. That's going to be my next little experiment to see how accurate is it really. You see, ground connection to the see the shield that's inside the the cabinet. So this is the fastest sweep. And this is actually 10 megahertz input. And if I'm not mistaken, we've got one division, right? And that is actually correct. So yes, this is one. It is able to do 10 megahertz. And of course, if I go down in megahertz, you can also see the 
amplitude gets higher and the shape is changing a little bit so here is one megahertz and then now we got a nice and beautiful <laughs> I don't know what you call that this is not super beautiful this sine wave here am I the one who is doing no I am running it a nice sine wave input. Oh, it has something to do with the level. Hmm, that's weird. So there's some unlinear. I don't know. It's probably not super linear. This input. See, and this is my input attenuator here. It is so bucky bucky and needs to be super cleaned. Ooh. Yeah, but that is definitely 10 megahertz capable, and at the moment we are at 1 megahertz. I kind of like this uh, way that you change the ranges, see, from microseconds to milliseconds, like that. I mean, you save a lot of positions on your time base, and now you can read each position. That's That's actually okay. The trigger knob here is really, really so, so critical. But yeah, it is up and running. Only loose connections. So now I've assembled this unit again. I tried to clean the contacts a little bit, but I'm not super, super lucky with this. See, they're still a little bit bad here. But then, look, whoops, see, DC offset, and then, so there's definitely something with this switch, or some of the input offset stuff here that is not perfectly fine, and then it comes, of course you can fix this by simply adjusting the position here, right, but it's not supposed to do any of that, it's supposed to be not affected by input attenuation and uh, time base was also a little bit dodgy but of course we don't need the time base right now we are in x y mode so this is here external so i'm using the external x but it's a super beautiful tiny little picture here <laughs> super super sexy thank you anyway for watching please come again tomorrow all right